So we'll just give you a quick heads up on our DO35, the hitch and that side of things. The critical point for all of us is around our height that we need to aim at. So we need to aim it off the ground to the underside of our hitch, to the top of our tongue on our vehicle. So what I'm saying is where our toe ball is normally located on, that height there needs to be around that 500 mil. We don't want it to be at 550, we don't want it to be at uh, 420 mil. It's either too high or too low. It's got to be level, we need it to be at that height. Um, so generally, most people can sort of line it up as a knee height is close to the 500 mil. Now, if we've got that set, um, our hitch pin's located on our tongue. When we reverse back up, our hitch pin will go up through the center of the, the, uh, the hitch itself there. So inside there at the moment, it's ready to receive the pin. Now, to lock that on, we've got the pin in there effectively. Um, I'll press that button. That has now locked that pin to the vehicle. It's locked the hitch to the vehicle. It cannot disconnect there now. Um, the 35, for argument's sake, what that stands for is a three and a half ton braking capacity on that hitch. So that's what the DO35 represents. So that pin hitch combination will withstand three and a half ton before it would let go. Considering the van's only ever going to be at two and a half ton, or you know, you might go over. If you do, you shouldn't be. But that's the sort of weight frame that we're walk talking with. Um, once that's locked on there now, this cap will now let us locate that on top. When that's unlocked, I can't put the cap on. So you know when you're hitching up your vehicle, uh, to your vehicle, you can put the cap on when it's locked on. If I try to do that, I will not get that cap to sit on there whatsoever. It will not go down. When it's locked on, I can push on there and hopefully I'll get it first go. It does sit on there, it will lock when it's only locked onto the pin. Now once that's locked on, obviously we've got to connect up our um, safety chains. You do have two, they do have D shackles on them already, so you don't have to worry about bringing D shackles. They are rated D shackles to suit for the trailer. And what we recommend is that they're not just hooked straight to your tow bar, you do cross them over diagonally. So that would be disconnected off there. We would hook that onto the vehicle effectively on the vehicle with the D shackles hooked onto here, that's what it'd look like crossed over. So it's a safety thing. If it was to come off here, if this was undone, it cradles the trailer there so it can hold it in position. The other thing that you'll see on every vehicle is the breakaway unit here. Now, certain ones, if I pull that out of there, and I'll just get my finger in there without breaking everything. We can get onto that and pull that out. That there now has effectively pulled on the brakes. It's using the power that's in the battery that's located inside here. And Wendy will just zoom over there. You'll notice now that there's a little green light on here. Effectively beforehand, you might have noticed there was no light because I've pulled this pin out. So effectively that pin has now pulled the brakes on. We tried to hook up here, it will not move. It's the same as the handbrake being on. That's just to show you, you do not have to pull that out at all. That's just to give you an idea on how it operates. If you ever do, don't panic. It is grooved, you can see. It will just slide back into the opening on the front of that there and lock back into place. This has to be attached to the rear of your vehicle. Now this does not get attached to the D shackle when that's hooked up to your vehicle. It doesn't get attached to the little wire pin that holds your main pin in for your tow hitch, you need to locate that somewhere sturdy on the, the draw bar, on the, um, the side of the draw bars, the tow bar area, there's normally a little hole or there's a little space where you can hook those into. Because what this does, if all that was to fail, this will pull out and jam the brakes on and save it from careening down the road. In New South Wales up until last year, 2019, um, they used to require by law to have a brake monitor fitted to your vehicle. They do no longer require that as a legality. You can just hook this up to your vehicle now because you need to maintain the battery that's inside there. The battery that's inside that little housing will charge when you're traveling. Uh, if you go into storage mode, you can put it on a slow trickle feed as well, but you can ask us more details on that side. Um, the other one from there is then just hooking up your, your plugs. Now this particular one, because it is the Quantum Plus, um, I'll just pull them out of the way and I'll talk more about those in a minute. But this particular version, the Quantum, the Quantum Plus, the Quantum Full Height, they have this little 
um, bracket, whatever you want to call it there at the moment. On the side of it, it does have ESC written on it, and that is the electronic stability control. So that is our sway control, effectively. What happens there, you pull off the side of the road, you come back onto the road, you get a bit of movement up, that will automatically activate and pull the brakes on. So it's stopping or helping stop the potential of the whole van careening off um, into a big sway down the road. It will pull the brakes on and help you get it straight again. I'm not going to say it'll stop everything 100%. There is potential still, depending on situations. Every situation is different, but that will help bring the risk down a lot less. Mention to your insurance companies saying that you've got that on there. They do help with your premiums as well. Um, so because that system's on here, this particular one has opted um, as the standard setup, the recommended setup. So the back of your vehicle will have an additional red Anderson plug fitted. And that there is powering that ESC unit. Okay, uh, There is options, but we need to talk about this when you're talking uh, about your van. When we're at this point, you've probably already optioned that. That particular one might have been wired through the 12 pin plug as well. Uh, but that's something that we would need to talk to you about in detail on that side. So as a standard format, you will have that. The other plug is our standard grey Anderson plug there for charging wires. Um, that's standard on any caravan trailers, those side of things. Um, that there you'll have on the back of your vehicle. So I'm just tucking these out of the way so we can get to them. The main one that we get asked a lot about is our 12-pin plug. So our 12-pin plug, as you can see there, you're still utilising seven pins on the bottom, which is our standard seven pins for our trailers um, that we might currently have, box trailer, boat trailer, any of those sort of things. It can be in different configurations with those seven pins. It could be seven pin flat like it is there now. It could be in seven pin round, roughly about the size of my hand there. It can be in seven pin round large, which is about that diameter. So they're the three main sizes you can get in those. Because we utilise a couple extra pins in here, depending on configurations inside, uh, we do need to run at least two of those extra pins. So we will go up to the nine, potentially up to 10 or 11 of those pins. But again, that is what we talk in detail. So you do require on the back of your vehicle to have a 12 pin plug fitted to your vehicle as standard. And then we wire it up to suit for your other appliances that may need that. That is basically your hookup of your vehicle. Um, obviously, I can't show you here now, but if that was hooked up to the vehicle, our jockey wheel, once we've got that there, we've got adjustments, not only to adjust it up and down by winding it, we've also got a lever off the back edge here. I can pull that out when it's on the vehicle and slide that master that jockey wheel up and down as well. That's that lever there. When um, we've got it on the vehicle, we want to take it away or anything, we would then swivel that whole wheel up so that would be pulling that handle around, pulling it out and lifting the wheel up and letting that handle lock back into itself. So that allows the jockey wheel to lock away. And then finally, the handle comes off. Don't leave it on because the next time you go to use it, it won't be there. It is magnetised, but it's not there to stay on. It is meant to come off like that. Uh, it locates in on its own. You utilise it when you need to. But in a nutshell, that's your DO35 hitch, how to hook it up to the vehicle. But critical, I will go back over that again, is the height. The height is very important that we need to be around that 500 mil from the ground to the top of your tow bar tongue to where the tow ball would normally fit onto. Um, we, you know, there's a little bit of tolerance, but we don't want to have a you know, 50, 80, 100 mil difference between that height because it just won't work. It throws out all the weights and everything as well, and it won't tow nicely for you. Okay, so just a quick heads up on how we hook this up to the vehicle. Um, first things first, you'll see that we reverse the vehicle onto the hitch now. We'll lower this down. So just winding down on the jockey wheel, and you'll see that coming on to there. Take the weight completely off the jockey wheel, and I'll go the whole process on this here, try and do it as quick as we can. Now on the bottom of the jockey wheel, I don't know whether Wendy can see there, but down on this point at the bottom of the jockey wheel, there is a little locating lug there to lock in the wheels to stop them spinning around like that there now with my foot. So just here is a locating lug, and that'll go into one of these holes. If we put it into that hole there, bring that down, now that wheel can't turn, that's solid on there. So from that point, I will then pull this handle out, and that allows me to swivel the jockey wheel up. But as I said earlier, that I can pull this part here out if I wanted to, 
and I can lift that wheel up and down. Now we want it down as far as we can there because when I pull this particular one to swivel it, as you can see, if I had that other one still fully extended that way, now if we turn the vehicle on a hard angle, we will punch this towards the back of the vehicle and do damage. Potentially that's where this has already got some marks on it there. So always have that right back. And that's your highest point to wind it up as well. So that's the out of the way finish completed with the jockey wheel. Um, back to this here now, we've taken all the weight off, so now I can lock this onto the vehicle. So I'll depress the red button there, and you'll see that slid across, that's now locked on. While I'm here, I'll put the cap on, and that's completed, ready to go. And then from here, I'll hook up the safety shackles, the safety chain, sorry, with the shackles. And you'll notice that I've crossed them over as well. So both into there. That's done as well, okay? The next one, I'll bring this on straight away, which is our breakaway unit. So I'll hook this down underneath here. That one's on, ready to go as well. And now I can start with the actual leads themselves. So in this particular model, as we said, it does have the ESC, which is that smaller red one there. They all have to come over to this side on this vehicle set up onto here. So our red Anderson plug, our gray Anderson plug, pretty straightforward with all of those. And then we've got our 12 pin plug as well. So that will go onto our socket on the back of the vehicle that's more than likely been modified on your vehicle to have a 12 pin socket installed. So they're connected, ready to go. And then finally, release our handbrake and we're good to go. Now you'll notice on this particular one, here on the side here, because this is a Quantum Plus with the stability control, which was that red Anderson plug, we now have two green lights in the top of the ESC here. If they were to be red lights, that means it is not active, it is not working, whereas the green is showing that we're good to go, basically. So, and now we could jump in the car and we could drive away comfortably knowing that we've got it all hooked up. Just a pointer here, when you go to disconnect, we'll take the cap off, I'd already just popped that off then. Um, but you'll notice now, I can press the button and nothing's happening. So to disconnect this from the vehicle, I need to depress that little lever and I will slide that part of the hitch part back towards me. So back to there, release the red button and it stays there now. So that now means I can lift it up with the jockey wheel and take that off the vehicle.